whatever you are believing God for. I want you to know that from tonight and after this uh, weekend, you are going to be anointed with an anointing that causes you to trouble what has been troubling you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to empower you with an anointing that it is, that is going to enable you to chase what has been chasing you. And I don't doubt what God is going to do. And I've seen it. I am a true testimony of what the Lord can do. I'm so excited to be a son of this ministry. It's, it is an honor. It is a blessing to be a son in this ministry. One thing that I've come to understand is um, when you are a son or a daughter of an apostle, you will operate, you might not be an apostle, but you operate in an apostolic anointing. I don't know if you can understand this. Because a child of a lion is a lion. Mm. A son or a product of a crocodile is a crocodile. It is equally harmful. Mm. Mm. Because there is no great dead who gives birth to ordinary children. There is no lion that gives birth to a baboon. There is no crocodile that gives birth to a lizard. Oh, oh. So when we talk about being in this ministry, you must have a revelation. What does it mean to be Baba Guti's son or daughter? You are anointed child of God. And I begin to understand why the man of God is telling us over and over again that we must pray. We must pray so that we begin to understand the, op the eyes of our understanding must be open to understand what God has put in his servant. If you read your Bible from cover to cover, you will understand that God cannot ignore a worshiper. Worship is not something we do in church. Worship is a lifestyle. You don't need to be a musician to be a worshiper. Because worship is not what you do when you come to church. Worship is a lifestyle. I want you to understand that there, there is a difference between a praiser and a worshiper. When you praise God, you thank him for what he has done. You look around in your life, you thank God for your car. You thank God for your house. You thank God for your children. But when you are a worshiper, you are deeper than a praiser. Mm -hmm. Because when, we, when you worship God, you relate to God, <laughs> not according to what he has done only. You relate to God, because he is God. Mm. At one time the Lord rebuked me and said, Son, you must learn to worship. Because you must understand. Uh, you must begin to understand that God cannot ignore a worshiper. David was a man full of mistakes, but he was a worshiper. You must learn to worship God. I know you are not where you want to be, but you are no longer where you used to be. Acts uh, chapter 16, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Mm. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. I want you to say suddenly. 
Let's preach together. I want you to say suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, I want you to say together with me, immediately. All the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Verse 27. And the keeper of the prison are waking from a sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the, prison, the prisoners had f- fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm. We are all here. May the Lord bless you through the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Now when you, when you listen to the word of God, the word of God is so awesome. When you listen to the word of God, you must understand that uh, the entrance of his word, the Bible says the entrance of his word brings light. When the word of God enters into you, it brings light. In other words, it brings revelation. When you read the word of God, you you begin to understand that there are four uh, nutritional values that the word of God is presented in the Bible. Number one, when you read the word of God, you understand the word of God is referred to as the milk. The milk of the word. It is a level. A milk level is a level. Milk is necessary for growth. A baby can feed on milk without adding nothing. Just milk. They can grow. Level number two is the meat level. Hmm? The meat level. The Bible refers to the word of God as the meat. Huh? It is another level of receiving the word. You can feed on any of these levels. And the other level, the Bible speaks about the word of God as the water. The water. It is another feeding level. And there is another level the Bible calls the word of God as bones. It is another level. And you must understand that according to your growth, there is a devil for every level. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> now from the portion of scripture we have read these are apostles the bible refers to this book as the acts of the apostles and this is paul and silas the bible says they were in prison not for a bad reason but for a good reason I always say when I get to this portion, it is true that midnight moments will not come to you because you have done something wrong. Bad things can happen to good people. (laughs) Midnight moments can come to anyone. Regardless of how righteous you are, midnight moments will come. Paul and Silas, after a good deed... The Bible says they were locked up. On verse 25, I want you to preach with me. You know, when you say amen to a preacher, you are not encouraging the preacher. I am encouraged already. Hmm? Mm -hmm. When you say amen to the preacher, you are saying, Pastor, let it be to me according to the words. So don't ever think that when you amen a preacher, You are trying to push the preacher. We are encouraged already. (laughs) Now bad things can happen to good people. Uh, Paul and Silas, uh, after a kingdom deed, not after committing adultery, not after fornication, not after stealing somebody's property, no, but after delivering someone from a demonic oppression, Hell breaks loose. And if you read verse 25, verse 25, it is not the beginning of the story because it starts with a but. No new story starts with a but. It is because it is referring 
to the previously mentioned events. Now the Bible speaks of the time of the day. It was not morning. It was not evening. It was midnight. The darkest part of the night. But one thing I love about Paul and Silas, they were wired according. <laughs> you are like a computer. How you are wired, how you are programmed, what has been saved on your hard drive, uh -huh, <laughs> is what comes out during your midnight moment. <laughs> what has been loaded in your spirit, what you speak uh -huh, is, is according to how you have been programmed. No wonder why God says to Joshua, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. In other words, you must save in your hard drive. Joshua, save the book of the law. <laughs> in your hard drive, in your spirit, in your soul, uh -huh. load the word of God. Download the software of heaven and load it on your hard drive. So when you get to Jordan, you will not tell Jordan a piece of your mind. You will tell Jordan, thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now Paul and Silas are wired differently. They are not just ordinary people. In the middle of the night, ah, uh, when things were not good, I want to see you come to church. <laughs> you used to drive. Now you are no longer driving. I want to hear you during that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. You used to have nice clothes. Now you don't have nice clothes. I want to hear you during that time. You used to have a work permit. Now it expired. <laughs> I want to hear you during that hour. <laughs> there is no way, Vangeli, we can come in diaspora without talking about papers. <laughs> because sometimes it, it, will, it will be midnight hour on your passport. It will be midnight hour on your days. It will be midnight hour at your workplace. But let me hear you during that hour. It is easy. It is easy to thank God when everything is fine. I know what it means. No wonder why people speak words like the Lord has blessed me with a car. It means you are saying you are blessed the day you buy a car. When that car hits a pothole and it's right off, what you are saying is your blessing is gone. Because you were blessed the day, you think you were blessed the, the day you bought a car. It's not true. You bought a car because you were blessed. The blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were not blessed the day you bought a car. <laughs> the Bible says it is the blessing of God that makes <laughs> Le Levi rich minus sorrow. Mm. The blessing is a magnet. You bought a house because you were blessed. Mm. You bought a car because you were blessed. There is a place in God. Paul calls it in Christ Jesus. Our father says in the kingdom of God. <laughs> a place where he says, come up here. <laughs> come up here. Hear me, my fellow pastors. There is a place in God where our father is saying, come up here. <laughs> Don't live down there. It is a place where life is easy. Mm. The year of seeking revelation 
to know your inheritance. Our father is saying, come up here. You are too far. <laughs> you are too far. You are too far. You are still content with civilian issues. You are too far. There is a place up here where we speak like our brother Paul and Peter. Where we say to rain, rain stop and it stops. Let's go back to our chapter. Let me see you at midnight hour. Let me see you at midnight hour. I know what it means to buy a car and in three months, I bought a car in three months, a Mercedes Benz, a nice one, not the old model, <laughs> a Mercedes Benz in three months. One day I was on the convoy, on Baba's convoy, one anointed man of God in a district car cut me in and I bumped on somebody trying to avoid and save the visitors I was carrying and the car was right off. <laughs> if my blessing was in the car, that was the end of the day. I came out of that car. I said to, to the devil, you can take my car. But my daddy says, take everything. Can I have Jesus? I can start all over again. <laughs> the anointing that flows in this ministry. Even if you are given, if you, if you are given a time to to start all over again, you can still succeed. Mm. Paul and Silas begins to sing a song. The Bible calls it a hymn. It is a song. A hymn is not an ordinary song. A hymn does not sing about the prison. <laughs> because your portion is not to talk about the prison. Mm -hmm. Your portion is not to talk about the mountain. Your portion is to talk to mountains. When you have faith, you shall say, <laughs> you shall say, <laughs> you shall say to the mountain, you shall not talk about mountains, you shall talk to mountains. Ah. And they begin to sing a song, a hymn is a song that relates to God in his sovereignty as God and in connection to creation. Mm. It, they were not singing about the prison. They were singing the song of the Lord. And watch what happens as they begin to sing praises to God, as they begin to worship God. The Bible says, suddenly, 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 your worship will release to you your suddenly. Your worship will release to you your immediately. <laughs> when you are a worshiper, they are not all things that you are going to struggle to buy. Mm, mm, mm. You are not going to buy everything. <laughs> In my life, I have learned, I have learned to say, Whatever I don't afford, I will get it for free. <laughs> Whatever you cannot afford is for free. <laughs> because Isaiah says, come and buy without money. <laughs> ah, there is a transaction. <laughs> there is a transaction that happens. But without money, come and buy. Whatever you can afford, you cannot afford is for free. Someone will give it to you. Your employer will say, I just like you. Uh, I just like you. <laughs> I want you to know after this convention, you are going to receive extraordinary favors. Uh -huh. 
some of you, let me prophesy, some of you, you are going to receive phone calls that are going to change your life forever. A phone call. Because when God releases an immediately moment, what your father could not do for 25 years, when suddenly comes, when eventually happens, when immediately happens, when certainly happens, what your father could not do for 25 years, I want you to know, without any struggle, without a credit, without a bond, you will buy it. You will have it. You will have it. There are some things that are going to immediately happen. Let's go to the next verse. The Bible says, as they were praying and praising, something supernatural happened. What happened? The Bible says, and the doors, the foundations of the prison were shaken. <laughs> you see, Paul and Silas did not struggle with foundations and doors. <laughs> because fighting for doors is not your portion. No wonder why overseer you will not hear a word in the Bible called breakthrough in the New Testament. There is no word called breakthrough. When Jesus died on the cross, we broke through already. Ah. You and I now we have what we call access. When we enter the presence of God, we have access. Because when you have the Son, you have access. <laughs> when you have the Son, you have access. I said, when you have the Son, you have access. My mom Vangeri is looking at me, she knows the story. Before I began to work with the evangelist, I used to pray and fast just to shake Baba's hands and to have time with him. I could pray and fast. Uh -huh. I would struggle. But because now I'm working with the son, he went, he went, he went. I have what I call unlimited access. I sleep in his house. I drive his car. Why? Because I have the son. Ah, come on somebody. Come on somebody. When you have the son, you have access. When you have the son, you have access. Sit down a bit. Sit down a bit. We must work this thing out and finish. I don't want you to be too excited and we lose direction. We must boil this thing down until you walk with a consciousness that says life is easy. Until you go back home and, re and remove that <coughs> because on every struggling person there is a confession. Until you go back home and begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Until you begin to sing the song of the Lord on you. And the Bible says, what was shaken was not the door. Some of you, you are wrestling with doors. But when he showed up, he did not deal with doors. I'm sick and tired of believers who are prayed for for deliverance every Sunday. Every Sunday you must be delivered. You are sick. Something is missing. How are you living? Mm, mm, mm. 
Because when the Son of Man shall set you free, the Bible says you shall be free indeed. When you are delivered, he looks at you and says, like he says to Moses, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. I want you to know that's the kind of God that we serve. He gives you permanent success. The Bible says you shall be above and not beneath. I love the version that says you shall be above only. <laughs> I don't know about your version. Mine says you shall be above only. <laughs> it means I don't know any other position. I know above only. Above only. You shall be above only and not beneath. And the Bible says the foundations were shaken. Their responsibility was not to shake the foundations. Their responsibility, even if they wanted to shake the doors, their energy was not enough. Otherwise, they needed a Samson anointing. But in this case, they had the key, the key that I call the key of David. You know, keys are different. Some keys you have to get to the door. Some keys are remote. <laughs> you just press the button and the door opens. Paul and Silas understood this key. It is called the key of worship. They pressed the button right at midnight hour. The Bible says when God showed up, he did not deal with the symptoms. He dealt with the root cause. Mm. Jesus healed someone and he says, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> he deals with the roots. He does not address the sickness. He says, your sins are forgiven. Why? Because when God deals with you, he deals with the roots. And watch what happens when you sing the song of the Lord at midnight hour. It affects your environment. The other prisoners, uh, they were not even singing the song of the Lord. But they heard Paul and Silas singing. Some of you, you think you are there. You are not yet there. <laughs> because the door that was opened is just enough for you. If a door is just for you, it's not a door enough. Because when it happened, it affected their environment. Number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, it affected the hearers. Number three, <laughs> the pens or the chains on other prisoners were loosed. And the Bible says, not only Paul's door, not only Silas' gate was opened, the Bible says all other gates, every other gate, every other gate, whatever your God will do for you, it's a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. 